In this module, we're going to do a uh, guided demo of deploying a new AVS object and related components. At the end of this demo, we'll have an environment that looks much like this diagram, uh, an AVS private cloud deployed in the West US region, connected to a VNet with an administrative jump box behind Azure Bastion, and connected to our on-premises data center via ExpressRoute Global Reach. So step-by-step -step overview of what we're going to go through. Step one, we're going to request host quota so we have something to deploy AVS on. Step two, we'll actually create the private cloud. Step three, we'll connect to a new Azure VNet. Step four, we'll uh, verify our private cloud components, and then we can go on and consume resources in the AVS private cloud. Okay, we are here at the Azure portal, and the first thing we need to do before we create our private cloud is to uh, assign host quota. So we will go to help and support, and create a new support request for this. Briefly describe our issue. We're going to say we need capacity. Our issue type is technical. That is the right subscription. Uh, we don't have this service deployed yet, so it's not going to show up as my service under my services. So I'll click all services and search for Azure VMware solution. Our resource will be a general question. Capacity management issue, problem subtype, uh, we request additional host quota capacity. Next tab, it's going to search the uh, knowledge base for recommended solutions. Here, it's just going to tell us this is what AVS is. Hey, do you want to deploy it? Of course we do. First step is requesting host quota, which we're in the middle of. We'll go over and provide some more details. Uh, the description is a certain format it wants this in. We're going to provide, um, we're going to tell Azure, this is going to be a production deployment versus a proof of concept. We're going to tell it deploy in West US is our region. Three hosts. Uh, we'll elect to share diagnostic information. Scroll down here. We'll set our preferred contact method to email. Uh, never call me Microsoft. Email is always fine. Scroll and confirm nothing else there matters. Great. Review and create. Let's take out my options here. The request looks good. I'll hit create and it has been submitted. Now, when you do this request, uh, there can be up to five business days uh, before the hosts are actually assigned. Um, we've shortened that a little bit for the demo, so we're going to proceed as if host, uh, host quota has already been allocated. So I've gone back to the main page of my Azure portal, and I'm going to go into my subscription. Before we can perform any AVS-related operations, we need to have the AVS provider registered. We'll confirm that by scrolling down here to resource providers, and then searching for Microsoft.AVS. Uh, we see here that it is registered, so we're good. Um, if your subscription was created after about April of 2021, this should be automatically registered, but it doesn't hurt to check. If for whatever reason it was not registered, we would simply select it and click the register button above. I'll go back home. So we have our host quota assigned. We've enabled our provider. Now we're going to create a resource group to host all the resources we're going to deploy today. So I've created a new resource, type in resource group, pick that from the drop down, create. We have a catchy name. For us, it's going to be prod, AVS, 01, and RG for resource group. And we're going to pick a region for this. Uh, we requested host quota in West US, so that is where we'll put our resource group. And we'll review and create. And create. That's a very quick operation. So now we can go to our resource group. And now we can actually create the Azure VMware solution object. Type it Azure VMware solution, pick it from the drop down and click Create. Now, on our prereq tab, it's going to tell us that we need to have a few things uh, squared away before we continue. First of all, we need to have our host quota assigned. We just did that, so we're good. We're also going to need a non-overlapping CIDR address block. So we've talked to our network people. We have a, a range that is not used on-prem or elsewhere in Azure, and we're going to apply that. Click Next to go to the Basics tab. Our subscription and resource group is pre-assigned. Now we need to uh, provide a name. So we'll give this another catchy name, something like prod AVS01, and we'll call this PC for private cloud. Location, again, this needs to match uh, where we have requested quota, so that's West US. Size of host, uh, at the time of this recording, only one node is available, so we'll do AV36. Number of hosts, three. And our address block. Our networking team has helpfully provided 192.168.92.0 slash 22 for us. Review and create. 
going to review these terms and configurations to make sure nothing looks onerous. All good. We'll hit create. Now, creating a private cloud for the first time will take three to four hours. Again, for the recording, we've shortened that. With our private cloud deployed, we can now go take a look at it. We will go to resource. And you can see our status has succeeded. We are deployed in West US. And you can see the uh, network range that was applied. We applied the 192.168.92.0 slash 22 segment. And some things have been carved up for us automatically. You have a peering subnet, a private cloud management subnet, vMotion network, and a number post three. So with a private cloud deployed, there's not a lot we can do with it yet. We need to connect to something. We go to the Manage Connectivity tab. And we're going to use this new Azure VNet Connect feature. Uh, when we do this, um, Azure will take care of creating a VNet if we don't have one existing already, creating the appropriate gateway subnet for us, creating a uh, virtual network gateway for us, and connecting that to the AVS Express route. So we use that feature, and we're going to create new for the virtual network. Um, that default name looks good to me, so we'll keep that. We are going to change the address range, though. We have a, a new range provided by our helpful network team for this. This will be uh, 182.168.96.0. Uh, so 24, give us a class C. And we need to create some subnets as well. First one is gateway subnet. This is used by um, the virtual network gateway. And you notice if we'd accepted defaults, this subnet would have been predefined. Uh, that went away when I provided my own address range. So I've carved this up into a few different subnets. We use the first slash 27 for that. Uh, in addition to gateway subnet, we're going to create two more subnets while we're here that we'll use later in the lab. Uh, the first will be used for Azure Bastion for connectivity to VMs that we'll deploy later. We'll give that our network range. And the next will be, we'll just call this one management. And this will be the subnet that we deploy our Jumpbox VM on and we'll access that Jumpbox VM through Azure Bastion. Go. Okay, that all looks good. So we're creating a new VNet. Address block for the VNet looks good. Virtual network name looks good. We'll hit save here. And that will trigger the backend automation that deploys all the objects necessary to create a new VNet attached to AVS um, so that we can connect to uh, the AVS private cloud. Um, that, in reality, will take 30 to 40 minutes. But again, right away when we're doing a demo. OK, from here, we'll go back to the resource group. And so we have our AVS uh, object deployed. We have our VNet connected supporting it. Uh, now we need a way to actually access the private cloud. So to do that, we'll create an Azure Bastion resource. This is a way to um, access VMs without necessarily opening RDP. Let's type in Bastion, pick Bastion from the dropdown. Um, ignore that rating. Everybody's a critic on the internet. Bastion works just fine. We'll give it a name. Uh, keep the standard Prodi VS01 Bastion. Deploy this in the same region that the rest of our resources are in, West US. Uh, tier, we're only using this for break glass administration, so we don't need any special high availability. So we're going to drop this down to the basic tier. And for the virtual network, we will use the one we just created, uh, Prod AVS01 PC VNet. And it, the Azure Bastion subnet was pre selected for us. Now create a new public IP address, give the public IP address the default name. That all looks good. Review and create. All looks good. Create. And Bastion will deploy. This is another one that takes about 30 minutes to make the networking changes. Uh, with Bastion deployed, we can go back to the resource group. And now we'll create a Windows VM that we can use to actually log into AVS. Windows 10. Okay, we'll give it a name. Prod AVS01 Jumpbox. Region, mm, let's go West US this time. Don't need any special redundancy. Uh, default image is fine. Size is fine. We need to give this an administrative username and password. We'll call it AVS admin, and we'll give it a super secure password that is certainly not used in every VMware lab ever. Okay, uh, public inbound ports. We don't need any open because we're going to use Bastion to connect. And we'll confirm that we do have licensing rights for this. I'm sure we do. Okay, scroll back up and I'm gonna go to the networking just to make one more change. Subnet's good, public IP. We don't need a public IP because again, we're accessing this via, via Bastion. Okay, 
That all looks good. I'll go to review and create. Scroll down, making sure everything looks good here. Great. This will chug along for a bit. And when it's done, we can go to the resource. Connect. And Bastion is the op as the option. So yes, indeed, we do want to use Bastion. And we'll give it the username and password that we created earlier. And click Connect. You may get prompted here about sharing the keyboard. Please select Yes, I'd like to do that. It will save you quite a bit of frustration later. I'm going to tab back over to our AVS portal. And I'm going to go back to our private cloud object. I'm going to go to this Identity tab. Here we have the credentials and the web client URL for uh, vCenter and NSX Manager. So I'm going to copy the URL for the web client. Go back here. Paste it in. Uh, I will accept these, uh, these certificates. Launch the web client. Accept again. And now I need to copy some credentials over. So admin username. Nope. Our admin username is cloudadmin at vSphere.local. I'll copy the password to the clipboard. Cloudadmin at vSphere.local. Paste in that password and log in. All right, I have a vCenter running in the cloud. Look at me. Uh, you can see our SDC data center default object, our default cluster one cluster, and our three hosts are there. All good, right? Let's come back here. Um, now we know we can connect to our private cloud from the VM running in the Azure VNet, but we also want to connect to on-prem. So at this point in the lab, we're going to make some assumptions. Um, and those are that you work with your network team. Your network team uh, supports an express route that connects your on-prem data center to um, a, a point in Azure that is accessible to this private cloud. We're going to configure express route global reach so that we can peer the express route supporting AVS with the express route supporting your on-prem connectivity. And we'll go to the connectivity tab here, express route global reach. And we're going to add a connection. And again, our network team will have provided a circuit ID that we will paste in, as well as an authorization key that we will also paste in. And with those in place, we can click Create. And we're going to wait for the state to pop in it connected, and it did. So now, from our administrative box here, so now we're going to go back to the Identity tab to get those credentials handy. Copy the URL. I'm going to add a new tab here. Um, this management box is actually on the on-prem network. So I will paste the URL for vCenter in the cloud. Accept the certificates again. Admin at vSphere.local. I'll pop back here for the password. And bam, I can now connect to the vCenter and AVS from my on-prem environment as well. All right, so in that demo, we stepped through the process of requesting host quota, deploying the private cloud, connecting to an Azure VNet, and connecting back to on-prem. Um, in our next module, we'll run through some post-deployment considerations for operationalizing your AVS environment. Thank you.